Good evening and welcome to St. Paul Neighborhood Network. My name is Martin Ludden and it is my privilege to serve SPNN and our team and our city and you as executive director. Uh, before we go any further, I want to acknowledge that I stand here tonight on land that is the traditional homeland of the Dakota people. We're just a few miles north of Bedote, the coming together of waters, that is the site of both their genesis and genocide. We also acknowledge that indigenous peoples continue to live and work and contribute and create across this region and this nation. And we commit to continuing to work with native and indigenous media artists and filmmakers. I'm here in our studio right now by myself. Uh, Steve and Bianca are here, of course, uh, but you are not, and that feels weird. Uh, this is usually the part where I would ask you all to turn to one another and break out of your Minnesota shell and introduce yourself to a stranger uh, and tell them why you're here. So if you're joining us via Facebook, let's do this. Uh, give a shout in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from and what you love about SPNN and why you're here tonight. We're gonna build community however we can, even if it's virtual. <laughs> Um, tonight, we're going to focus on our team uh, and the work you all have been doing with them over the last year. And I want you to know that each and every one of us on the SPNN crew, uh, we miss you a lot and we can't wait to have you back here for a grand reopening. So as it is, we have adapted, we have made it work just like we've been doing and you've been doing, I'm sure, for the last year. Uh, we have a great program put together for you tonight. You're going to meet some members of our team. You're going to hear from a couple special guests you're gonna see some fantastic videos that we produced in-house and in keeping with our COVID protocols uh, to show you what we've been up to over the last 50 weeks. Creating COVID safe video is not an easy task, uh, but our team was equal to it. Uh, and I think you're gonna enjoy what you see tonight. Um, know that we don't get to do this work without your support. So if the spirit moves you during the goings on tonight, please head over to www.givemn.org slash SPNN and make a gift to help us wrap up our fiscal year on a high note. So this is whose show is it anyway? And when we asked that question, uh, we came up with lots of answers. And one of them was Kwame McDonald. Kwame was a huge part of SPNN in the late 1990s through the late 2000s. He hosted 500 episodes of Sports Wrap, uh, and he also covered numerous community activities and events. He served on our board of directors, and he was an early voice challenging us to serve the entirety of this community. Kwame left us 10 years ago this year, and I didn't have the chance to know him uh, personally or professionally, although I had a sense for how important he was to SPNN. And in preparing for tonight, I got to learn what a towering figure he was from some, from some people who knew him uh, very well. Here at SPNN, Steve and Bonnie both had the pleasure of working with him, uh, and one of Bianca's first jobs at SPNN was editing Sports Rap, so his spirit and his influence are still strong uh, with our staff here. Tonight, uh, and in honor of his impact, and to recognize the 10th anniversary of his passing, we are rededicating this room, where I'm standing right now, as the Kwame McDonald Studio at SPNN. If you never had the pleasure of knowing him, I'd like to welcome three very special guests to share their memories of Kwame. So friends, here's Gopher, former Gopher basketball player, sports broadcaster, and founder of Rethink the Win, Leah B. Olson, in conversation with our very own St. Paul Mayor, Melvin Carter, uh, followed by a remembrance from Kwame's son, Mitchell. Well, Mayor Carter, it's really great to be here with you today to share some of our fond memories of someone who was close to both of us and close to so many in our community and Kwame McDonald. I'm really excited to hear what your first memories of them were and where you guys first met. Uh, I have no idea what my first memories of Kwame McDonald are just because he was always there. He was just, as a, as a young person, uh, he was there at the community center. He was there at the uh, community theater plays. He was there at the rec center. He was there at the library. Uh, he was there at my track meets or when we'd go to the Central High School football game. Uh, he was just always there where, where there was an opportunity to cheer on St. Paul students, uh, to cheer on African-American students, uh, to mentor somebody, uh, to help uh, where, where students were angry about something and wanted to take action about something, uh, mm -hmm. where there was a high school football game uh, or where there was a good cup of coffee, uh, you could find Carly McDonald. My first memory of him was at Minneapolis South High. I was playing basketball and into the gym came Kwame McDonald and he 
kind of marched right over and introduced himself to me. And from there on, I then have the same memories that you do, that everywhere that I went, Kwame was there. Um, this just very welcoming person who wanted everybody to do well. You know, too many of our kids don't have somebody in their life who is, who's just that consistent, who's just that smiley, who's that has just that big of a laugh. Uh, and who is just always generously willing to just pour it into you. And he understood how important it was to get girls into sports. So outside of being this great activist, the civil rights activist, all the things that he did, he really saw this piece for girls in sports that was really kind of way ahead of its time. I've got daughters who are athletes, and you know, I grew up as an athlete. And, you know, he would talk to you about the race you just ran. But he really talked to me about how you came from behind and did you know you could catch that guy? He was so much about the wisdom, but kind of giving it to you in a way that you didn't really know he was giving it to you. you know? And he one of it out of you, he pulled it out yeah. of you. Yeah. You know, and that's the interesting thing. I think the, 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 the most common conversation I had with Kwame was him just saying, tell me something, <laughs> you know, him just yeah. saying, literally saying, tell me something, you know, were you ever on sports rap? Yes. A couple of times. Same here. And that, the other thing I loved about that is he would say, Hey, Leah, do you want to come over and be on sports rap? And, and well, one, again, no one was asking, you know, um, Right. female athletes to be on shows then. So I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And then I would come over and um, we would just talk. H how will people pass on Kwame McDonald to the next generation? And, and how can people understand who he was as a man? Most of the impacts that he has on our community, we probably don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is nowhere near, you know, he, he doesn't have a, a, a bust of his head kind of sitting there. Not to say this was Kwame McDonald. Uh, I think we pay that forward. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I think it is important to remember him and have these conversations and to have a studio named after him because I think it does help us bring it forward. And I know my last kind of memories of his words to young people were about having self love and self confidence. And he definitely instilled self-confidence into me, which helped me find my own self-love. And so um, as I move forward, those are, that's some of the pieces I hope to bring forward in Kwame um, myself. He's somebody I really loved, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just, uh, I never heard him say a bad word about anybody, you know, and I could just, I think, find the inner good in folks. Uh, and I really salute and celebrate the, the decision to name that studio after him. But then I also just appreciate the opportunity to spend some time uh, this week uh, reflecting on what an enormous character he was uh, and continues to be uh, in our St. Paul and Twin Cities community. Yeah. Well, my father was a very uh, compassionate, outgoing um, person who wanted to help everyone. If there was, a, there was any person that I've met uh, in my life that really wanted to have situations for people better than situations that he was in himself, um, it was my dad. He really wanted other people to succeed. And he really wanted to um, help them. And he was very, very, very proud of who he was or, you know, of, of where he came from. And he loved, he loved everybody. He, um, a lot of people look at him as being pro-black, but he was pro-black, but he was, um, but, but he respected anyone from any other um, ethnic background that was proud of who he or she was. So he always promoted that um, whenever, um, whenever we talked. And um, he, was a very, he was a great dad. He was always around me, even though he helped everyone else. Um, I never felt that I was lacking for anything um, from him or, or my mom. What he meant to the community, I think, was, you know, he was, he was a guiding light. Um, he was a person that would spring into action if someone needed um, him and he agreed with what um, 
that individual or groups um, wanted to happen. Uh, I think a lot of people looked up to him. Um, there are a lot of people who are doing um, good things in the community that he helped. And there are people that are in different positions um, across the state uh, that um, he stirred in the direction to um, help get them and put them in position to also um, contribute uh, to the efforts of the um, um, African-American community. Oh man, uh, that boy, did he love sports rap. He really saw that as a platform uh, to um, get people um, recognition that usually probably wouldn't get it from other media outlets. And he really loved um, conversating, talking and meeting new people. There were people that he would meet and then um, an hour later, um, yeah, he's a guest on my show or she's a guest on my show. Um, you know, he um, always wanted us to watch the show. He always wanted me to be on the show and I never wanted to be on there. Um, but I was fortunate where he said my last show was coming up and he wanted me to be on it. Uh, I didn't want to be on it. Um, my mom talked me into it and said, you might, you know, maybe someday you'll be glad you did this. And of course, um, I am. Uh, I was next to his last show. And I was like the last person that he interviewed for the show. And I have that memory right now. And so do a lot of my family members because he ordered about 30 copies after he uh, did it. And that's the way he was. Um, he, he lived big. SPNN, uh, the other things he did, the broadcasting, um, it, meant, it meant the world to him. Thank you, Mr. McDonald and Ms. Olson and Mayor Carter. Uh, thank you for your time and for your memories and stories about Kwame. And so many of those themes that we heard in those memories are things that still hold true here at SPNN today. And that's access and mentorship and representation in media, um, access to media, it's community building. Uh, and so much of that still rings true for us today. We're here in the kitchen at SPNN, um, which is a place where we do a lot of community building as well, uh, internally and with, um, with our members and guests. So if you were here with me, on a Friday afternoon around lunchtime, you might be surrounded by 35 members of our CTEP AmeriCorps crew. Uh, and those members serve throughout the Twin Cities and they teach basic, uh, basic digital literacy, computer skills, job search, media skills for youth and adults. Uh, and this last March, they went from a place-based direct service model to a completely remote technology-based service delivery model and they did it in about a week and it was fantastic. Uh, but you don't have to take it from me. We can hear it directly from them. So let's hear what our CTEP AmeriCorps team has been up to this last year. Since 2004, SPNN's AmeriCorps program, a community technology empowerment project, has taught technology literacy skills across the Twin Cities. Its mission is to bridge the digital divide, uh, specifically for new immigrants and low-income communities. Taking on the role like of uh, a technology tutor was um, it's just, it's just so much fun. Sometimes that would be teaching someone how to use a computer for the first time. Sometimes that would be teaching someone how to make a model they wanted on the 3D printer. So I help in the open lab with any support these students might need. I also run one-on-one -on -one appointments with students uh, for more individualized learning. And on top of all of that, I also help build out my site's capacity, and this is through doing different specialized projects, whether that be building a website, making um, videos to support student learning, or even just building out new curriculum or updating existing curriculum. One of the main roles of CTEP is just to make sure that people have access to technology and technological literacy. This year, when I'm serving at PPL, we're doing adult basic education. So we will do uh, week-long courses about just computer basics and at the end they students have the opportunity to take these North Star assessments and get certified so that when they are applying for jobs and building up their resume they can say to this company that they're interviewing I have this certification. My name is Huda El Beltagi. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Um, I'm coming to uh, the United States, it's uh, five years. I live with my family, my husband and her daughter. 
I have a job in my country. I have a lawyer job. I am coming the class computer because I am I know the computer and pertains the this time because all all think have computer. Members also have CTAP specific goals to meet, such as carrying out civic engagement projects. Uh, for example, I um, host a uh, game conference for teens with uh, other CTAPs that had experience um, with, with working with teens. Working with people one on one has been the most rewarding part of service. I really like just being able to sit down with someone and say, What do you want to learn? How can I help? All told, CSET members created 112 new class formats across our partner network during this time, representing one of the greatest contributions of SPNN toward innovative economic training in the Twin Cities. Now more than ever, people are becoming aware and entering the space of digital inclusion. I would hope that CTEP members are people who can really educate others about what's going on and, you know, from their own lived experiences, what they've observed and um, know about this, this issue and how they can be part of the solution. Hey, welcome back to the Kwame McDonald studio at SPNN. A um, couple quick administrative notes. Uh, first off, um, we do what we do here because of support from people like you. So if the spirit moves you tonight, you can head over to www.givemn.org slash SPNN. I want to say a special hello uh, to Bev and Nadia. We've got several board members uh, watching, we have some staff, we have some CTEP folks. Uh, keep talking, keep chatting in the, in the comments and keep building community. You heard from our CTEP team there and that kind of last Zoom thing that you saw that looks so familiar now. Uh, that was the entirety of our, our CTEP cohort, all 35 members. They've been doing outstanding work for the last year. They've been doing it virtually. Um, they've been adapting incredibly. You heard uh, Joel, the program director, and Lizzie, our new program manager who made the video, uh, talk about some of those accomplishments. But 112 new uh, class formats over the last year. Uh, that's incredible work. Um, when I get to spend time with the CTEP cohort, uh, it always makes my week. There's so much energy there and commitment um, to making this world just a, a little bit better. Some people wonder, like, how does... Um, how does CTEP fit into the SPNN mix? And I think it's a fair question. We're a community media center, um, but we're all about access, and that's what CTEP is about too. It's about access to technology and access to opportunity, um, access to work and jobs, uh, civic and social opportunity. So it's a great mission match, and we like having them around uh, quite a bit. I'm, uh, I'm in a suit. <laughs> I haven't been in a suit for like a year, um, but happy to do it and happy to be here with you all. Um, I think I'm camera ready. If I have something in my teeth and you know me well enough to have my cell phone number, please send me a text. Um, or call me out in the comments. We'll get it fixed. Uh, but it's likely that none of you uh, have been here, at least not very much uh, in the last year either. So I thought maybe we'd go take a walk and see what's happening here at SPNN. Come on. We are here in the gallery, and as you can see, it's pretty empty. Uh, this is a space where you, know, you can find some inspiration, maybe meet a new creative partner. You can sit and just take a load off and have a rest. Uh, and I think this space at SPNN, more than any other, is where we really feel that buzz of energy and that spark before events. It's where we feel that bustle of people checking out gear and coming to classes, and it's here that I really feel that um, and we miss that, and we miss you, and we hope that you miss this too. But just because there's nobody here right now um, with all that buzz and bustle doesn't mean that SPNN isn't here for you and your needs. Uh, the program team is still teaching documentary and filmmaking. They're still here to give you the gear and the know-how uh, that it takes to tell your story the way you want to tell it. And I think we may have even caught Bonnie. And if you know SPNN and you ask whose show is it anyway, we all know it's Bonnie's show. So come on over. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Martin. How are you? Good. Good to see you, too. And good to see all of you. I wish you could be here, be here in person with us, but obviously you can't. But we are still open. My name is Bonnie, and I have been here for 19 years. And 
standing right in the spot, ready to give you gear as you come in, do your show, and share it with the wider community. So let's take a look to see what you've all been working on this year. In June 2020, we made the tough call to cancel DocU that summer for the safety of the participants. Instead, we invited them to participate with us in virtual classes and workshops and in other programs. In the fall, we launched a pilot program called Spotlight Short Series, where we brought on 18 emerging filmmakers and grouped them into small groups where they produced six short documentaries about urgent current issues. Our third year of New England Fellows launched virtually in the fall as well. Our six fellows are working on documentary projects about really urgent and important issues of our time. Our programs have been primarily virtual, and we look forward to the day when we can bring beginner and emerging filmmakers together to be in community in person again. Hi, my name is Sequoia Hawk, and I took all three of SPNN's program, the DocU, the Spotlight Short Program, and I'm currently in the New Angles Fellow Program. It wasn't until I joined the DocU program that I even considered filmmaking as something I could do. And since then, I've fallen in love and been able to take the Spotlight Short program, which helped me be able to work in a group together. And now having the opportunity to do the Fellows program and have a full length documentary under my belt is absolutely amazing. So I would not be the same person, filmmaker, um, artist that I would without these three programs. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackie Tyson, and I use she, her pronouns. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Dayton. I use they, them pronouns. And we are both community technology empowerment project members serving at SPNN to help bridge the digital divide in the Twin Cities metro area. This year, we've been working to transition the camera and editing classes from in-person to virtual and are continuing to come up with ways for members to stay connected virtually. Other than classes, we also host a drop-in space every second and fourth Tuesday of the month from 6 to 8 p.m. And in this space, we teach various skills such as recording at home, podcasting, script writing, and much more. And we also have office hours every Monday night from 6 to 9 p.m. During those hours, members can sign up to discuss ideas, ask for feedback, get help with editing, receive digital literacy training, and help you address any of your media needs. And thank you all. We look forward to working with you. It goes without saying these last few months, uh, we've probably experienced some of the most turbulent and historical elections our country has ever seen, both on a state uh, level and obviously a national level. And I was lucky enough to be able to produce and create a political web series uh, with my friends at SPNN. SPNN supplied um, just all the necessary tools we needed, which helped bring to light our message. SPNN was really awesome and beneficial and a great resource when we set out to make that political project. Hey, we're live in the SPNN Youth Lab. Uh, this is where our media active crew works on awesome video projects for nonprofit partners like the Cedar Cultural Center uh, in TEDx Minneapolis. It's also where we work on our SPNN and Speaking of Youth podcasts. And I'm here tonight with Tang, who you can find here on most Sundays, helping you navigate your thorniest editing issues Tang, how you doing? Hey, Martin. I'm doing well. Hi, I'm Tang. Um, I'm Max's media coordinator. Help you with any kind of editing or any problem solving here at SPNN. Here's some past work from the youth programming. In the youth entrepreneurship program Media Active, youth receive job training in media production and build business skills while learning about working in the creative field. Despite the pandemic, Media Active was able to keep engaging with youth and clients with a safe approach to production. Last April, youth interns and staff began the SPNN podcast, which at first was a series speaking with artists and media makers during the time of COVID. But after the murder of George Floyd and the uprising, began to focus on racial and social justice groups working in the community. Another new podcast series, Speaking of Youth, focuses on youth issues and youth voice, and the SPNN team facilitated a multi-week podcasting workshop for youth interning with Shift MN, with a focus on telling LGBTQIA stories. Some of the film projects we created featured hip hop dance at Indigenous Roots, TEDx Minneapolis Talks at MIA, animation for Springboard for the Arts, and stories from elder centers and prisons performed by 10,000 Things Theater. Expanding our youth job training, we got the opportunity to facilitate a workshop series for Hired, where we brought in black media makers to engage with black youth. 
We've been lucky to continue engaging with our youth virtually through our drop-in Create Tech program, where we get to work on personalized media projects. Hi, I'm Gabe. I use he his pronouns, and I started working with Media Active around four-ish years ago. Uh, I had an internship in the same building as them, and as soon as that was over, I kind of just joined in, and I've been here ever since. I really like filming, editing, and photography. Filming especially if like it involves other creators, just because I really like getting to see their perspective on things, and just the, I think other people's work in general is just super cool. A personal project that I have right now is I run a podcast with uh, two other exchange students that's, well, about exchange, and we just kind of interview other exchange students and get to laugh and talk a lot, and I really, really like the project just because, I don't know, it's fun to just chill and talk about exchange. Welcome back. Uh, once again, we're here in the Kwame McDonald studio at SPNN. Um, no one has texted me, so I don't think I have anything in my teeth. Um, although I am starting to feel some solidarity with all the NPR personalities that have to do the pledge drive this week, because I'm just sitting here talking to a camera. <laughs> There's not a lot of feedback there. Uh, but again, thank you to everybody who's in uh, the comments and chatting and getting to know each other. I wish we could have you here getting to know each other uh, in person, but we'll settle for the virtual version. Uh, you'll notice I'm rocking my uh, Kwame McDonald sports wrap uh, coffee mug. I do, I love to drink out of this, not just because it's a big mug that holds a lot of coffee, uh, but to remind me um, about Kwame's impact. Uh, and we're so happy to have dedicated the studio here tonight um, as a fitting kind of memory of his, his work and his time. You heard from the Access team there. Uh, you heard from some of our uh, media active and youth participants. They are here for you. We're open on Tuesdays and Fridays and Sundays. Come check out gear, uh, come take classes, um, come use what we can use what we uh, what we have for you in this um, pandemic time. I want to give a, a quick shout out and uh, remembrance to the prima dons. Uh, they've been producing here with SPNN for 25 years, uh, and that long run is going to end uh, at the end of March. So just thank you to Don, Don, and Mark uh, for all your work over the years, and we're going to miss you, and I hope you find some fun things to do with your free time. Uh, it is time for us to go for another little bit of a walk. We're going to go see uh, the backside of SPNN. So come with me, and here we go. So welcome to the SPNN admin space. We're a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, this is not something you might see every day when you come to SPNN to work on your projects. It's where I spend most of my time, maybe a little bit too much of my time. But nowadays when I'm here during the day and it's just me and Steve, it's a really stark reminder of how lucky we are to have the team that we have at SPNN. Um, this is where you know Bianca edits Candy Fresh or where Bonnie and Jua came up with Spotlight Shorts or New Angle Fellows. It's where Joel and Lizzie uh, recruit new CTEP members, and all that work is still happening. It's just not happening here. Um, but that's also not why we're here right now. We're here to go way behind the scenes. So come on back to Master Control, and we're going to meet Tajuddin. And Tajuddin is the guy who takes your media and gets it on TV with good audio and sharp picture. And he also makes sure you have live St. Paul Saints baseball and St. Paul school board meetings. Come on. There he is. Hey, Tajuddin. Hey, Martin. How are you? I'm good. How's it going? Good. Thank you so much, Martin, and welcome to Master Control. Again, my name is Tajuddin, and I am Master Control Manager and part of Community Productions. Community Productions have done so many amazing stories, so many amazing work, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Tajuddin, and I am a Master Control Manager. Master Control is where the magic happens. We move files around, connect cables, work with producers to submit their own programs, do quality control. We make sure that all of our channels have audio and video. In the city of St. Paul, SPNN operates four channels. Channel 14 is being our religious or multi-faith channel, focusing on religious programming and services. Channel 15 is our community access channel, where community members could create their own programs and share their own voices. Channel 16 is our educational channel with the SPPS programming. We broadcast school board meetings, graduations, NASA programming. Channel 19 is our community production channel. Programming produced by our wonderful production staff. We do live studio shoots, broadcast community parade, cover so many forms.
<laughs> you're not the only one. Right. I think I remember when we had conversations about the first times that we had these awakenings within ourselves that we were allowed to identify as more than one thing and mm -hmm. how complex it is. joy and personal fulfillment and um, allowing our musicians to express themselves. Welcome to the first ever Twin Cities Rise Virtual Gala. I'm Tom Streit. A good job, don't get too down. The world needs you. of the Margaret Mead dictum that a small group of committed individuals can change the world. Yo jong ku ye ni walo ye ka sa hai tie te jo ka mo le do ka tu ka ka mo tha so ke mu ku a tu ka mo covid 19. We are therapists, we are advisors, <laughs> relationship experts. When they're having issues, they talk to us. Again, welcome back to the studio. Um, you've now seen or heard from the entirety of our staff at SPNN, uh, and you've seen the production team video. That's Tajadine and Bianca and Steve, and they are actually all here uh, with me tonight, plus uh, Deb behind <laughs> the camera. So we have a very small crew uh, here tonight to do this work for you. Um, I wanna thank you for joining us tonight, and I wanna thank you for sticking around there are two things that I say to the team here pretty regularly, and I'm sure there are lots more, and they'd tell you if you asked, uh, but I'm gonna focus on two of them. Uh, whenever we get a readout, like in a staff meeting, of what everyone is up to, I always pause and I say, wow, that's a lot. And I do that on purpose, uh, because when you have your head down doing really important work, it's really easy to lose track of what the folks on your left and right are doing. And I like to remind us of the scope and scale of what we do here at SPNN. So to all of you watching at home, which I hope includes most of our team, um, you've just watched the video, and that was a lot. <laughs> um, second, I always send an email to the team uh, on Friday, and I always close with, let's do good work together. And I stole that uh, from an email from our current board president, Wes, uh, from an email he sent me when he first joined the board. Uh, I have appropriated it, he has approved. <laughs> Um, but that's a tradition we have. Um, so remember that, we'll come back to it later. Uh, so all that stuff you saw, uh, we did that this year and we did that and more and we did good work. And sometimes we did that despite the events swirling around us and sometimes we did it because of those events. And you don't need me to tell you that this has been a heck of a year. You lived it, we lived it. Um, but I think it's really important to name it because humans are very adaptable creatures and strange things become normal all too quickly. So almost a year ago, on March 16th, because of the rapid spread of COVID-19, we made a really difficult decision uh, with Steve and me and Bonnie and Joel and the team to close SPNN, except for in cases where we could leverage our resources for the greater good. 
And that was a decision-making lens that actually led us to some great collaborations with TPT uh, to get important coronavirus information out to our neighbors who speak Somali or Hmong or Spanish. Um, we were still closed to the public in late May when Minneapolis police murdered George Floyd. And as national media flooded into the Twin Cities, our members needed access to our gear so they could tell the story of the uprisings in their own way. So we reopened. We are St. Paul Neighborhood Network, but our team lives throughout the Twin Cities and we're all embedded in our own communities in our own ways. And this was a really challenging summer uh, as our staff and our members uh, bore witness to the uprisings through video work, uh, they coordinated mutual aid activities, they took to the streets, and they still brought amazing energy to the SPNN work at the same time. The renewed and absolutely righteous call uh, for racial justice has also led to some really hard work and introspection internally as we look at our own organizational structures and evaluate the places where we're not working in line with the values that we espouse as an organization. And I look forward to um, sharing some more updates on that when we have some concrete progress to report. We just started an engagement with Team Dynamics and we'll be working, them, uh, working with them for the, for the next year. So this year has been hard and there's no arguing that, uh, but this is a celebration and we have a lot to celebrate. So on our staff, uh, Julie Grande was honored with a Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship in Media and Film. Uh, Zania Coleman was invited to join the Nightlight Projection Mapping Fellowship with Public Art St. Paul. Those are big deals, uh, and we are super proud of them and the work that they do. Uh, we figured out how to keep offering our camera class in a COVID-safe way by having students pick up a camera on Tuesday, go home and take the, cam the class camera in hand on Wednesday and Thursday, and return it on Friday. So that's pretty cool. We learned how to teach editing remotely uh, using Zoom screen shares and tools like TeamViewer and LogMeIn to work with people in the comfort and safety of their homes. Just a couple of weeks ago, we hosted the Connect Media Festival, which is a whole media arts festival complete with screenings and workshops and panel discussions, and we did it all remotely. Look for that again next year, hopefully in person. As I mentioned earlier, our CTIP cohort uh, onboarded a brand new program manager, Lizzie Hutchins, welcome, uh, and pivoted to digital delivery of everything they do in the space of about two weeks. It was an incredible logistical feat. Um, we grew into kind of a new niche of helping orgs like Friends of the St. Paul Public Library, Ujama Place, Twin Cities Rise, uh, and Compass host virtual events and galas like the one we're having here right now. Uh, it's a gala, can't you tell? <laughs> uh, our production staff, including our youth team uh, of Media Active, have been incredibly busy producing media in partnership with state grantees communicating about COVID, uh, as well as local orgs like 10,000 Things Theater, TEDx Minneapolis, the Cedar Cultural Center, Springboard. So much work there. Uh, we started not one, but two podcasts. The SPNN podcast and Speaking of Youth are available wherever you get your podcasts, so check those out. Uh, we created and led workshops for youth from Hired uh, and ShiftMN to teach video and storytelling skills while exposing them to potential career tracks. We launched Spotlight Shorts to bring together small groups of filmmakers with different levels of experience to create documentaries about pressing social and community issues. And finally, we know that artists have been some of the hardest hit um, through the whole pandemic. So we've continued to prioritize paying the artists we work with. And we also launched Artist Payday Fridays in partnership with the Minnesota Music Coalition to give musicians a chance to highlight their work on our Facebook page and raise some funds through a virtual tip jar. There is so much more, <laughs> uh, but I won't cover all of it. I can't, uh, but it's been truly awe-inspiring to see all this happen uh, from my seat. We've been able to do all this stuff because of the team we have here. And when we came up with the whose show is it anyway theme, that was my answer immediately. It's their show. Uh, I see it as my role to encourage, <laughs> to remove barriers as best I can, uh, and to take care of the other stuff so they can do the work. And they deliver every single time. So to the SPNN team out there watching, I wish you could all be here with me in the studio. I wish you could all stand up in front of a room full of our friends and members and supporters and soak in a truly deserved uh, round of applause. And I'm sorry we can't do that because you deserve it. It's your show and you are amazing. I made a, a commitment to our team when we decided to close last March that we would not cut hours or reduce pay. And I'm happy to share that we've been able to honor that commitment uh, in part thanks to things like the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, but also thanks to the vision and flexibility of our funders. Uh, the McKnight Foundation, the Jerome Foundation, St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation, 
FR Bigelow Foundation, the Otto Bremer Trust, Best Buy, uh, St. Paul Cultural Star have all been outstanding at either offering unprecedented flexibility in program grants or shifting entirely to general operating grants. And it might be a little wonky and in the weeds to understand what it means to have a funder say, use this how you need to use this to do the work you need to do, but it's huge. So thank you to those funders. I hope I didn't miss anybody. <laughs> uh, and that brings us back to you out there watching us from home. It's your show too. Uh, you're who we do this work for and your support allows us to do it. We're gonna finish this year with a surplus. I won't hide that. Uh, and it feels good. A surplus means that we can invest in our staff, invest in technology, and prepare what is certain to be an uncertain future. Uh, this is our second year of surplus consecutively, but cable revenue continues to decline. Uh, and much of that funding has helped us do, that's helped us do so well this year is one-time money. Two years ago, um, after we had reorganized SPNN, um, I told you that was one of the hardest things I'd ever had to do but it meant that SPNN was still here, that we were still strong, and that we were going to continue to be here. So I stand here again after a year that was harder in many ways than that year, and I'll say it again, we're still here. Uh, we're going to still be here for as long as we can, but we need your support. Our fiscal year closes at the end of April, and if what you saw from us tonight, if what you saw from us this year, if that had value for you, if we made you smile, if we made you think about something differently, or if we helped you create something good in the midst of hard times, then please help us close the year strong and make a gift tonight. We'll drop, uh, I believe, the link in the comments. You can see it down here. That's kind of fun. It's like being a weatherman. You can see it right there. Boop. Uh, <laughs> but you can visit www.givemn.org slash SPNN and contribute online right now. We have already raised at least $700 tonight, so thank you for that. Uh, let's keep that momentum going. Throughout the isolation of the pandemic, uh, the trauma of George Floyd's murder, the grief of so much loss um, of life, of livelihoods, of experiences, of connection, the importance of the work we do here has become so clear. It's about story and it's about agency and access and connection and community. In the last year, we've seen video become both a primary means of connection for a physically isolated population and a stark reminder that not all of our brothers and sisters have the skills or equipment to access that means of connection. Again, this year we saw bystander video ignite uprisings against police brutality and systemic racism as we try to hold powerful forces accountable for their actions. We've seen organizers and activists tell the stories of those movements as a catalyst to drive more change. We've also seen institutional media and government, foreign and domestic, use video to spread lies and misinformation in both passive failures to do the hard work of good reporting and active attempts to divide and mislead. Video is a powerful tool, but it is just that, a tool. In the right hands, it can speak truth to power, teach valuable lessons, bring us together, and lead us a little bit closer to liberation. And at its kind of most molecular level, video is light. Our earliest ancestors gathered around campfires to connect and share stories and wisdom and throw shadows on the wall. And with time and technology, a projector replaced the fire the images got clearer and started to move around and make sound. And even now, when too often the light is a computer monitor or a phone screen and the audience is only one, it's still light in the darkness. And we bring that light. We bring understanding, and if we're doing it right, we build community at the same time. That's our work. We build community through media. It's hard work, but it's good work, and it's important work. So let's do good work together. Thank you, and good night. Thank <laughs> you.